When you think about patient-centered outcome measures, you have to recognize that we're in a transition from measuring process to measuring outcomes. So a lot of what we've started to do initially in measuring quality has been you know, measuring process. And what we really want to get to is how do we improve outcomes for patients? And so as you start thinking about quality measures, we start moving from measuring simple process, you know, did you have the examination, why did you have the examination, to starting to look at the environment and the overall outcome of care. And then you start tying the outcome of care into um, guideline measures. And for example, there are guidelines that look at how frequently should a patient have colorectal cancer screening. When they're having, and screening is obviously examining a patient in the absence of signs and symptoms. So if you measure what you did, and you measure what your recommendations were for follow-up, depending on whether you found something or whether you didn't find something, and if you found something, depending on the pathology, was it a precancerous lesion or an insignificant lesion, and how many or how few were present, there are actually guidelines recently published within the last few years' time, consensus guidelines, that look at when that patient should come back for follow-up. So if you look at the environment of care and you look at measuring what recommendations do we make for follow-up, then you start bringing those two things together so you're improving care for the patient and improving outcomes on a long-term basis.